Good morning, everybody. My name is Reverend Lewis J. Mitchell, and I use he, him pronouns, and I am blessed to serve as the pastor here at Rincon Congregational United Church of Christ. I want to begin with um, our land acknowledgement. Our campus is located on the ancestral lands of the Tohono O'odham people, and I want to explain to you, as I do most weeks, why we do a land acknowledgement because it's important for us to remember our history as a country and as the church and to remember our complicity in the occupation, usurpation, and theft of this land. It's our responsibility to be good stewards of the land and to strive to make amends to the ancestors, to the people whose ancestors' spirits still live among us on the land on which we sit. So this morning was interesting. I woke up and my phone said one time and my stove said another time. And so I spent the first 10 minutes trying to figure out what time it was. Um, sooner or later, I, I suspect I'll get used to Arizona, although Rich tells me I, I may not, uh, that Arizona is full of surprises. But it, it was really disorienting this morning, I was like, Am I really early? Am I on time? Am I bordering on late? What just happened here? So I had coffee and watched an entire movie because I was <laughs> up early. If you are here and you'd like not to be seen on our YouTube uh, channel or on our Facebook feed, these outer two sections will allow you to do that. You'll be able to worship in anonymity and not be seen on either of our feeds. At the end of each row, there is a black binder. If you would complete that and hand it down the row and then hand it on back from whence it came, we appreciate that. That's how we keep track of our numbers and it's important to us to know that you are here. Do we have anyone who is visiting with us for the first time or one of the first few times and you haven't yet introduced yourself? If, you would, if you're able, please wave a hand or stand so that we can greet you and welcome you. I know, okay, I know all you people, so okay. All right. If you are visiting with us online for the first time, or the first few times, and haven't introduced yourself, please say hello in the chat so that we can also welcome you. And we thank you for joining us online today. We appreciate you being with us from wherever it is you are. I want to take this opportunity to invite those of you who have been with us for a while, who have been perhaps taking a break from committee work and other things. Well, vacation's over. <laughs> it's time to get involved and put an oar in the water and help us row to where we're headed. So, ushers, AV team, worship, music, and arts. I know I'm going to forget somebody, so I'll ask for that in a minute. Congregational life, justice and witness, uh, faith development, land justice, buildings and grounds. Who am I, who am I missing? Care. Creation care, call to care, choir. Stewardship, oh my gosh. Stewardship and finance. Now, it might seem like a lot, and so you don't really have to be like all in the committee all the time. If you have a skill, a talent, something you love, find the committee that most aligns with that and do a thing, a thing. It might be helping out on buildings and grounds if that's your happy place. We all know that I'm a nature phobe, so not my happy place, and I also have no useful skills in terms of fixing anything, so uh, I should stay away from that. But when everyone participates, A, you get to build some wonderful and lasting friendships, and B, you get to be right in the middle of the flow of all that your church is doing. Amen? Amen. Okay. I have another announcement. Reverend Dr. Tony, who is our interim conference minister, will be here and visiting with us next week from 3 to 5, in the prayer garden. She is new to the area and certainly new to us. Let's have a good showing and welcome her joyously and, you know, be the awesome church that we are. 
I have no doubt that she'll be just impressed beyond all measure because she's a smart lady. So there you go. Uh, we have a choir announcement. I'm figuring it out. There yeah. we go. Yes. You got it. Well, uh, gosh, I feel like I've, I've, I've just started here, and I'm like, Easter's a month away. Uh. Yeah, so I've been picking music, looking at all my choir members, all the would-be choir members in there, and I've picked a wonderful piece that I want us to be able to do for Easter, but it's going to take a little bit of practice. So I'm going to send out emails to everybody to remind as well, but at 9 a.m. next week, we're going to have our first rehearsal uh, before just to get our feet wet to show you what we're doing for a piece. So if you have an interest in choir or just an interest in singing for Easter, uh, come on by at 9 a.m. next Sunday. We'd love to have you. Amen. Amen. Love that enthusiasm. <sighs> yes. Chris, Mike, there we go. You got it already. You're good. Hello. There we go. Uh, I'm Karen, and I am involved with the Creation Care and the Land Justice Committee in picking up on what Reverend Luce has said about our land acknowledgement and whose land we're on. I want to let you know that the Apache Stronghold Group is having a spiritual convoy to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals starting today. They're going to send off from Southside Presbyterian Church. The point is they've been fighting for years to keep a... Um, uh, multinational mining company from destroying their sacred lamb up around Superior. So if you can go tonight at 6.30 at Southside Presbyterian, they're sending off that spiritual convoy. They, the trial is on, or the hearing, I should say, March 21st. And um, they would welcome donations, and mostly they say they need your prayers. So I'll have the flyer back here if you want to get some more of the details, including their website. But pray. Excellent. Thank you. And let us please put our prayers where our heart is. Amen? Okay. Other announcements? Okay. We're going to have our ministry moment, and then we're going to have a presentation from our ministry partners, ICS. But we're going to start with our ministry moment first. So hang tight for a second. Chris, you're up. Hi, I'm Chris Lynn. Um, I am the co-chair of Justice a Witness. Um, we have a meeting on Tuesday this week. Um, <laughs> but um, this is my first year here, really. Um, and I didn't really know what the mission moment was <laughs> until I was emailed about it. Um, but um, it's a fund for helping in the world. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's a great fund um, that helps globally. Um, and we have a video here to show first, and then I have a story to read. Hunger is defined as a condition in which a person does not have the physical or financial capability to meet basic nutritional needs for a sustained period. It can be brought on by disasters, poverty, or fleeing conflict. The experience of hunger to those who are hungry goes deeper. Food sustains life. Responding to hunger is an affirmation of life. One great hour of sharing is responding to hunger issues, no matter the cause, both locally and globally. With programs to address the root causes of food insecurity and bring real and sustainable change by working together, side by side, one community at a time, all around the world. And with your support, we will not grow weary. We will indeed harvest a good crop. The need has never been greater. The opportunity is now. It's time to share.
So this story um, is was suggested on the website. Um, it's called A New Frontier in Responding to, to Hunger. Like we just saw, hunger can be brought on by disasters, poverty, or conflict. But the experience of hunger to those who are hungry goes deeper. In a world where climate change disproportionately impacts places and people already struggling with food insecurity, now is the time to share, generously and creatively. In Nueva Frontera, New Frontier, and other rural areas in the department of Santa Barbara, Barbara, Honduras, a new program is unfolding and has already reached 500 families. Esmeralda Robles in a, is a 27-year-old wife, mother, and farmer who lives in the Macuslio region and has benefited greatly from the installation of an eco stove which has significantly reduced the soot that has previously covered her home. Before I had a permanent cough, Esmeralda says, now with just a load of firewood, you cook, you don't need much, unlike the stove we had before. And it's very helpful for our lungs that there is no smoke. Beyond this life affirming aspect for the individual families, the most important contribution of these eco stoves is their significant reduction in the use of firewood. This is all part of the new frontier of innovative CWS programs developed with local partners and supported by one great hour of sharing to improve food security while adapting to climate change. For Esmeralda and her family, other aspects of this program include learning about food and nutrition, hygiene, waste management, and environmental protection. She has participated in training sessions about planting crops and producing fertilizers and has received seeds which have allowed her to grow most of the food her family eats, such as plantain, kersha pumpkin, chili peppers, and yucca. She is also able to sell or exchange her part produce with neighbors. Additionally, Esmeralda was part of a past chain activity in the program where she received several foster animals. This activity consists of a family receiving a pregnant pig, sheep, or cow, and feeding and caring for it. When the next piglet, lamb, or calf is born, it is passed on to another family, which in turn will do the same. Esmeralda describes her village as a beautiful place with friendly people with good coexistence. We all know each other because we have always been there. I was born and raised here. Food sustains life. Responding to hunger is an affirmation of life. Let us not grow weary, but affirming of life. Regardless of the cause of hunger, one great hour of sharing responds both locally and globally. Like Esmeralda, many of our global siblings living at the intersections of hunger and climate change are already reaping the harvest of your past generosity. But there are still more families in need of these life-affirming programs. It's time to share. And then a passage from Galatians 6, 9 through 10. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well done. I want to invite our ministry partners, ICS, to come up and share a moment with us. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, you bet. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much. I'm Tom McKinney. I'm the CEO of uh, Interfaith Community Services. And this is more than a mission moment. I think it's a thankful moment to you all, to this congregation, because uh, a, a little less than a year ago, you've provided a, a lot of peanut butter for us. Recently, uh, you have won the most per capita in p pasta, uh, 400 pounds of pasta. Yes, you should. Absolutely. Um, but most of all, thank you for hosting us for over the last year. 
Um, we have um, been on this campus and, be, and made to feel just like uh, everybody else here. We've been able to bring our clients here and everyone has felt welcome. Um, you've served people in the parking lot for food uh, every day, every Wednesday. Uh, since we've been here. It's just been an absolutely incredible experience for us to be here and to be made to feel so welcome. If you don't know, I mean, we've housed almost every program we have from ICS here. One of the things that it houses uh, the most of is our self-sufficiency programs. So besides just feeding people, we're trying to get people back to work. We're trying to get single mothers through college so that they can have a better paying job. All of these things are housed right here on your campus. And if you want to find out more about that, um, we've brought some treats in the prayer garden to just thank you. I think there'll be coffee and some treats out there. But thank you for hosting us and thank you for your prayers for ICS and for all the clients that we serve. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you, you, Pastor so Lewis. Much. I know that was tempting, but do not get up right now and run to the prayer garden. That will be after service. Um, I have one more quick announcement. Uh, yesterday, as I was out in the columbarium and Chris Jones was giving me a great history lesson about all the people who were there, I had a notion, and I'm just going to plant this seed here. I haven't discussed it with Sharon yet. But those of you that have a long history of this church, I wonder if a few of you might form a little subcommittee to work with Congregational Life to do a history of everyone who's in our columbarium so that their lives and their attachment to this church can be remembered for generations moving forward. If you're interested, please see Sharon. And you know, I, th I don't wanna lose the history of this place. And as people, pass on, their names and their contributions and their relationships need to be remembered for those of us coming now and those of us to come later. Amen? Amen. Thank you. I'd like to invite Ann now to lead us in our call to worship, sung response, and first hymn. Please rise and body your spirit and remain standing for the contemporary voice, the sung sanctuary, and the first hymn. We welcome, we come to the well of God with cups in hand. We come to our thirsty, we come to our flesh. The road has been dusty, and we are parched by the seemingly never ending need to repair the brokenness all around us. We are tired and our heart is Our worlds have been slow, and our sand goes without our brokenness. We want to sit and rest. We want to take a break. Our fatigue distracts us every day. But our but thirst is broken. Where, where can we go to be refilled? We place our hope and trust in Christ, for Jesus is our guide. We hold our faith in God for God is our flowing fountain. The Holy Spirit moves, stirring the waters, bringing refreshment up to the surface for us. Let us drink deeply with the knowledge that our needs are met. Our energy will be restored, our wounds will be healed, and our journey can continue. Amen.
contemporary voice says, I incessantly look for water in wells dug by men, and I have drunk enough sand to prove it. <laughs> Christus la peña de rep que está brotando, agua de vida saludable para ti. Christus la vida de amor y los amores, agua de vida saludable para ti. Ven a tomarla, que es la más dulce que la miel. Refresca el alma, que refresca todo tu ser. Cristo es la peña de red que está brotando. Agua de vida saludable para ti. Christus, the mountain of horror, which is flowing, water of life, go forth to heal, to make us whole. Christus, the mountain of horror, which is flowing, water of life, go forth to heal, to make us whole. Sweeter than honey is the stream, come taste and see, refresh your being. the pathway of love above us all, fountain a fountain of salvation flowing free. Come seek the one who understands your grief and pain, refresh your being, refresh your heart and mind. Flower of flowers, the lily of the seemed appropriate to have a title that said come thirsty to start with a drink of water <laughs> greetings beloved of God may the peace of Christ be with you please pray with me Gracious God, quencher of our thirst, fulfiller of our hopes, and nourisher of our hunger. Remind us to come to you with everything that we need. Remind us that you are our provision. 
Thank you, God, for being our living water. Thank you for pouring freely into us so that we might pour freely into others. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, God. You are my rock, my redeemer, my well, and my oasis. Amen. So this passage in Exodus, in Exodus is uh, but one of the passages that talks about the people um, grumbling. They were not thrilled with their journey out of bondage. Um, hunger, thirst, loss of familiarity, impatience, discomfort, all of these were a part of their journey. There were moments of dissension and moments of outright rebellion. Moses had a hard way to go. I imagine that most of us that have ever worked in clergy have had moments of identifying with Moses and thinking to ourselves, really? This is, I don't, I don't remember them teaching this in a class and seminary. Moses was trapped between the disgruntled and the divine. Can you see it? I think folks like to think that the, the getting free is just a joy. All butterflies and lilies. But if you ask anybody in recovery, they will tell you that there are many moments of being angry, afraid, resentful, and even looking back and wondering if it was all worth it. Today, the church universal is in the middle of this same kind of journey. I'm no Moses, but I know a few out there, people who are trailblazers, people who are carving out new ways to be church, people who are bringing all that they have lived and all that they have learned to bear on what it means to be a new church, what it means to be the disciples of Christ in reality, not just on paper. You know, I was uh, reading something this week and it talked about, you know, that old nugget that I heard growing up, hate the sin and love the sinner. I submit to you, why are we hating at all? If they are to know us by our love, why are we trying to figure out where we can squeeze in a little hate in the name of Jesus? I, I don't, that's not a theology I can really get behind. You know, the, the work of change is hard and loud and messy and there will always be pushback. And right now, the pushback is huge. It's all over the news. It's in legislatures all around the country. It might be at your dining room table with your family members. It might be in your own head, warring between all the things you've been taught and the things that you have since learned. I don't know. But what I do know is that our throats will get parched from yelling into the void over and over again, yelling, peace be still. Where is the love? What do I do? There'll be times when the thirst that we see and experience will be from people outside of our circle. There will also be times when those same people will be our bringers of water. Much like the nameless Samaritan woman who responded to the need of Jesus, you have to ask yourself, or I have to ask myself, you don't have to do anything. I have to ask myself, so what was the point of mentioning this Samaritan woman here? What, what was the storyteller trying to tell me? The Samaritan woman was mentioned because she was someone who would not usually even be spoken to by a Jewish man. A Samaritan in the Bible was a person from Samaria, a region north of Jerusalem. And in Jesus' day, the Jewish people of Galilee and Judea shunned the Samaritans, viewing them as a mixed race people who practiced impure and half pagan religion. She wasn't someone from the right side of the tracks. She was someone from the wrong side of town, from the hood, one of those people. 
if that had been a modern exchange and Jesus was a little white lady, she would have crossed the street and hugged her purse close to her and locked her car doors as the Samaritan walked by. But this exchange is more than a lesson in ancient social interactions. It's an invitation to a new way of engagement. It dissolves the lines between the genders. It dissolves the lines between social and religious separations. In this exchange, Jesus asks, actually, if we're truthful, he didn't ask. He just kind of demanded, give me water, which was a little rude, but you know, I don't. Okay. He tells the woman to give him some water and offers her the possibility of a different kind of water. So here we are several lifetimes later, still living in a world full of separations and still thirsty for something that quenches beyond what our bodies need. Perhaps, perhaps we will find the wells that will nourish us on the wrong side of the tracks. Maybe we'll find them in the alleyways or the modern equivalents of brothels. Maybe we'll find them in shelters and jails. Maybe we've spent so much time looking in the places that we are most comfortable that we missed where the water is more freely flowing. Sometimes we come to a familiar well looking for something that will nourish us and we come up a little empty and we leave a little dry. Any of you ever experienced church that was a little dry? <laughs> that should be a lesson that maybe we need to go searching for a well. Now, I don't, I'm not, again, I'm not a nature person, but I understand there's like a divining rod kind of thing that you take out and you look for water. Is that accurate? Okay, because I don't know. You know, I don't know. I just, I turn the thing, the water comes out. I, I don't, you know. Perhaps we're expecting to, as they say, do the same thing over and over again and get a different result. So I know that change is hard and uncomfortable, and I know that bucking tradition chafes, and I know that grumbling will ensue. I am counting, on, and I've experienced just a pinch of it. Y'all have been kind to me so far, but as the honeymoon comes to an end, I expect the grumbling might ratchet up a little bit, but I'm here for it. But what I need to tell you is that we need the water. We are water. Our bodies are 45 to 60% water. We are so invested in water, our sweat, our tears, our baptisms, all water. The living water of God animates the breath and dust that we are. Our need and our thirst are with us always. This is the good news. The well is still open to us. And the Samaritans are still answering our request that they pour for us. And we are still called to pour for others. God is still a God of provision. Even in our grumbling and our fear, even as we are unsure of heading to a new place when we long or be confused by the help when it comes. Anybody else have that experience before? Like, okay, I didn't see that coming. I, that's not what I, so uh, to be fair, when I was looking for a placement, uh, one of my favorite placements, y'all were actually my first, first favorite, but the other one was in Hawaii. And I thought, okay, God, you know, that'd be lovely. You know, just, I'm just saying, God, if you gotta send somebody, send me. Uh, they didn't even respond. <laughs> it was like, oh, okay, that was rude. But what I didn't know when I was thinking about Hawaiian rains is that the place that I would find the most nurture, the most fulfilling fountain would be in the desert. I didn't see that coming. God gave me a no, but the yes was so much bigger than I even hoped to dream of. God is still faithful. Our thirst will be quenched even, perhaps especially, in the desert. 
And when we are quenched, it is our job and our call to continue to offer nourishment to those who are still in need. The whole idea of a, of a fountain is we drink, we share. We drink, we share. Final thing I'm going to say is that I want us to make a commitment, I'm me too, to see those who we view in need as fountains and not just receptacles. People that have gifts, people that have a life story that we might need to know. People, whole human beings. We were talking earlier this week uh, about how people can dehumanize other people. Calling police officers pigs and making black people three-fifths of a person. And there's all kinds of examples. Women who are powerful are called other names that are dehumanizing. When we take that step towards dehumanizing anyone, we are moving in the wrong direction. That person who you step over on your way to where you're going has a life story and a life. And they're a whole person created in love by the same person who created you. Open your eyes. Open your heart. They might be the well that you specifically been thirsting for. Amen. It's hymn time. If you sound better standing when you sing, and you sound better singing when you stand, feel invited. If not, rest on your feet. to this time of prayer and I invite you now to take a moment if you feel comfortable doing so just close your eyes and breathe deeply breathe in the love and mercy of Jesus let let your plants be watered by a God who loves you with great tenderness and great affection in your heart and in your mind lift up those things that you would ask of God for yourself, for your family, for your neighbors, for our world. 
in your heart and in your mind, lift up a thank you for the many blessings that God has poured into your life. In your heart and in your mind, pray for the other, whoever that is, to you. It may be the other side of the street. It may be the other side of the world. It may be the other side of the political aisle. It may be anyone who is other to you. In your heart and in your mind, ask God to weave us together. Every strand of each individual life touching and woven with another life, with the land, with our history, with our present, with our future. Ask God to bind us so close to the will of the divine, to the love of the divine, that we can neither fail nor fall without witness and support. Poor God, poor. Fill us to overflowing. Fill us beyond our belief, God. So much so that every step we take, every life we touch, receives the benefit of your blessings in our lives. Soak us, saturate us with love, with mercy, with vision that sees you in the eyes and the heart of everyone we come in contact with. Remove the concept of enemy from our hearts. Give us more love than we can possibly hold and enough that we will spend the rest of our lives trying to share the love that you give to us with everyone we meet. We thank you, God, for your incredible bounty, your incredible mercy, your incredible grace, and your incredible love. Please pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Luke 12, 34 tells us, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let our hearts direct the use of our resources, our time, and our talents. May our generosity meet God's abundance as we strive to be a beacon of God's love and justice. Rushing down the rivers, water rushing.
rushing to the sea. Water comes to us so precious, living water makes us free. Drink deep the source of life, drink deep and know. Water springing from the dry place, water springing in the sun. Water comes to us so precious, living water for each one. Drink deep the source of life, drink deep and know. Generous God, <clears throat> receive the gifts we bring as we return a portion of your treasure to the use of your kingdom. May your will be manifested and your creation restored through the sharing of these offerings. Amen.
you all that we have a hosted coffee hour with our friends in the prayer garden immediately following service. Grab your cups and bring your thirst. Grab your pail and dip it into the well of God. Together we drink, together we serve. Yahweh Yaira, the Lord will and does provide. Amen. Amen. 